So for the last few sessions, I've been talking about special relativity. Now let me add some evidence to support the concept of special relativity. I'm going to start off by thinking about these some things called muons. Now muons are formed in our atmosphere, the top of our atmosphere, due to collisions with high -me energy cosmic rays which come from outer space. These high energy cosmic rays uh, interact with particles in our atmosphere, there's a number of chain reaction, and eventually we have something which is um, called a muon is produced. And muons are fast moving particles formed as a result of these cosmic rays colliding with our atmosphere, and they're relatively unstable. They only have a half life of about 2.2 uh, microseconds. So that means that. Uh, they don't normally or shouldn't normally be detected at ground level because although they're created and they're traveling fast the distance between the top of the atmosphere and the ground normally means that they have uh, decayed normally let me take you through the story so if we look at muons in a non-relativistic manner what we have here and I've got a rest half-life of 1.56 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds okay so uh, a slight adjustment on that earlier value but that's fine and what we say here is if the distance from where the muons are created to the ground is about uh, we've got uh, 100 uh, uh, one, th one million meters okay that would be about sorry about 10 kilometers okay so it's about 10 kilometers and let's say we have about a million a million muons forming. Now, if we know the half-life and we know the speed, okay, uh, it means that the time taken uh, to reach uh, planet Earth should be 34 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds, which is approximately 21.8 half-lives. So, if I want to find out the survival rate, I do 2 to the power of minus 21.8, that gives me 0 0.27 times 10 to the minus 6. And I'm saying about, in a non-relativistic way, about 0 0.3 out of every million muon particles should reach planet Earth. Okay. Now, what actually happens if we have a relativistic Earth frame observer? Okay, so this is what happens when observed or measured from an, uh, an observer on planet Earth. The distance traveled is still exactly the same. But what happens is that the time taken is going to be altered. The reason the time taken is altered is, or the, the time of the half-life is changed is because we have some time dilation. Time dilation, because of them traveling close to the speed of light, means that now it takes 7.8 microseconds uh, is equal to one half-life. So this is the relativistic Earth frame observer viewpoint. So that means if that's the case, then the time it takes to uh, reach planet Earth actually only takes up 4.36 half-lives. And that means my survival rate is 2 to the power of minus 4.36. And that means I get 49,000 out of a million uh, muons created reach the ground. And this is something which is observ observable and is actually happening. Uh, let's consider this from a different frame of reference here. So clearly, uh, the fact that we are observing muons on ground indicates some evidence that special relativity is uh, acting and time dilation is taking place. Uh, we can have some further proof, though. If we think about this from the muon frame of reference, now in this case, what happens is that the rest half-life is still exactly the same, 1.56. What changes now is we see length contraction. So the muon, rather than seeing traveling uh, them 10 kilometers, length contraction means it only appears to be about 2,000 meters. So in this case, 2,000 meters uh, gives us uh, 6.8 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, seconds, which is 4.36 half, half lives. So here the survival rate is also about 49,000 out of every million muons reaches the ground. 
Now there's some interesting facts here, so let's just compare these values and these dead reference frames. What we see here is non-relativistic means that no muon particles should really reach planet Earth. As it turns out, we are observing uh, muon particles reaching planet Earth in the numbers indicated because of relativistic thought. Now, if we look more closely, we see that for the muon, uh, what occurred was we had length contraction. From the ground observer, we had time dilation. For both of these, there was a symmetry, and it meant that the amount of half-lives which take place and the number of surviving muons is exactly the same. So that comparison shows it doesn't matter from which perspective you're looking at and which frame of reference, we will still get the expected, uh, the now expected relativistic results, and they are identical. So there's one special relativity proof. Uh, there's also the Michelson. Uh, Morley experiment, which is one of the uh, seems one of the great experiments in the world, although it didn't really find out what it had originally intended to. Uh, it was originally designed to measure the speed of the ether. Now, the ether was this idea of the medium in which light was assumed to travel with respect to the Earth. They thought there was maybe this cloud of ether and it was clinging to the planet Earth. But what it did is rotated with planet Earth. And if you could uh, work out or compare different speeds of light compared to moving through the ether and moving against the ether, then you should be able to work out the relative reference speed of the ether overall. How this was done? They had some light, and the light struck a mirror, which let some half the light go straight through, and half the light uh, reflect uh, along what's known as arm one. Okay. Uh, arm one is one route and arm two is the other route. Both of these have the same distance, although it was a range, so arm two would have light traveling into the ether wind, so therefore it was thought it would have an impact on the speed of light. Then the light uh, hits the two-way mirror again, and this time the light from either arm comes together, and it was thought that they would be out of sync and therefore you'd be able to identify some sort of interference. So what we have here is we use what's known as the Michelson interferometer. Arm um, 2, I said, is aligned with the direction of the Earth's motion through space, and that was thought to be the direction of the motion of the ether. And then uh, it was hoped there'd be an interference pattern observed uh, with the interferometer when it was ro rotated to 90 degrees. So that means we have uh, light traveling at 90 degrees to the ether wind, so therefore wouldn't have been affected. Uh, the effect was going to be small, but it was thought there could be some measurable shifts in the fringe pattern. As it turned out, this great experiment showed that there was no change in the fringe pattern at all. So if there was no change in the fringe pattern, it indicated that, as we now understood, uh, electromagnetic waves don't require a medium for propagation, and therefore the speed uh, was constant. So the laws of electricity and magnetism are the same in all inertial frames of reference. So there's a, another bit of evidence towards special relativity. And finally, uh, the, uh, the pion confirmation of constancy is the speed of light. Uh, a pion is a, another interesting particle, and what it does, it decays into two gamma rays. And what you can do is, by looking at the two gamma rays, uh, we can compare uh, the speed of the gamma rays uh, being uh, emitted, and they again seem to be exactly the same. So there's some evidence towards special relativity. And I told you really clearly.